The U.S. and Philippines just outplayed China in the South Pacific, and President Xi Jinping is fuming mad about it. Did a recent U.S. and Philippine deal just prevent World War III, or only ensure it'll happen anyway? On February 2, 2023, with the stroke of a pen, the U.S. undid nearly a decade of hard work by China in attempting to sway the Philippines away from its ally. The troubling thing is that it almost worked, and the results would have been disastrous not just for the U.S. but for the liberal and democratic world order. The Philippines is one of the most important nations in the South Pacific, thanks to its geographic location on the world stage. It sits astride the world's most important shipping lanes, which means that the nation can have a direct impact on the trade of most of the world's countries. This is of critical concern to China, seeing as the vast majority of its exports travel by sea. Even more importantly, though, is the fact that the nation imports over 60% of its oil from the Middle East via the sea. This is why China has worked so hard to modernize its navy and now has the world's largest navy. But that's not telling the full story, because pound for pound, China's navy still doesn't come close to matching the might of the United States' own navy. In battle force missiles alone, or the number of missiles for anti-ship, surface attack, and air defense, the U.S. still leads by nearly 50%, though China is working to close the gap. China's no pushover, though, and its new Type 055 destroyers are the most modern in the world, prompting the U.S. to hurry its own new destroyer design into construction. Most important to China is its new aircraft carriers under construction. Its Fujian Type 003 carrier is undergoing sea trials at the moment, and a second carrier is under construction, bringing China's total carrier force up to three. However, it's rumored that China is already constructing its Type 004 carrier, which will be a true rival to the U.S. Ford class. These carriers will be critically important, because without them, China simply can't operate far from its own shores against major powers like the U.S. And China desperately needs to be able to project power deep into the South Pacific and Indian Oceans both. Currently, China's crippling Achilles heel is the multiple choke points in the Straits of Malacca, or Gulf of Oman, where the U.S. Navy could interdict its maritime shipping. Modern Chinese forces face the exact same problem that World War II Imperial Japan faced. It's too easily cut off from vital imports by sea, despite its massive land border with the rest of Asia. This has been a big reason why China pushed its massive Belt and Road Initiative with very mixed results. America's new deal with the Philippines is the largest expansion of military access to the former U.S. colony in 30 years. The agreement opens up four new airfields for U.S. aircraft and grants America the right to maintain equipment and personnel in those bases. Now the U.S. has access to nine total air bases on the island, allowing it to greatly expand its military presence in the South Pacific. Sitting astride China's sea lines of communication, the U.S. can enforce a blockade of China with ease from the Philippines in case of war. But that's not the only reason this new U.S.-Philippine agreement has Xi Jinping hopping mad, because the expansion of American air power in the Philippines also threatens the most important item on China's agenda, the forceful reunification of Taiwan. The Philippines' northernmost island is just over 100 miles from Taiwan, and this is significant for the U.S. and its allies in case China tries to invade the island. Any war against China over Taiwan will be one waged at sea and in the air, but China holds all of the advantages in both regards. Its forces can safely operate from bases and ports on its own very heavily defended soil, while the U.S. and its partners have to fly aircraft from hundreds of miles away to defend Taiwan. The closest airfields outside the Philippines to Taiwan are located in South Korea, hundreds of miles away from Taiwan. The bulk of U.S. air power in the Pacific, though, is either on aircraft carriers in Japan or in Guam. U.S. carriers will likely be forced to stay significantly far away from Taiwan in case of war due to the threat of Chinese anti-ship ballistic missiles, of which China has hundreds, and aircraft flying from Japan or Guam would take as much as half a day just to arrive on station. This is a huge logistical challenge for U.S. forces in the region, as it limits how fast they can respond to a conflict, how long they can be engaged in combat operations, and how fast sorties can be generated. When you consider that U.S. stealth aircraft can only carry four long-range air-to-air missiles each, it only further complicates the air defense of Taiwan. But airfields in the Philippines are much closer to Taiwan and would allow the U.S. to more rapidly generate sorties to defend the island. This makes U.S. defense much more credible and helps deter Chinese ambitions to seize Taiwan by force. Ultimately, the best way to win a war is to never fight it at all. But access to four additional airfields in the Philippines are also important for another reason. It gives China more targets to shoot at. Currently, China has enough ballistic missiles in its People's Liberation Army rocket force to engage every single U.S. vessel and saturate its air defenses, with missiles left over to target every U.S. airbase in the region. This will be catastrophic for American efforts to defend Taiwan, 
and in dozens of wargame scenarios when China struck first in a bolt out of the blue attack, it managed to destroy as much as 90% of the US's air power in the region while it was still on the ground. Runways can be quickly repaired, but aircraft are much harder and costlier to repair. The US has deployed an array of missile defenses in its bases in the Pacific, but it's still woefully short of the number believed to be needed for even a portion of current US assets to survive a surprise ballistic missile attack. Many American military leaders have been ringing the alarm bell for years, but America's Congress has been slow to act. This is where access to four additional airfields becomes so important. China now has to plan on saturating four additional airfields and has to deal with the logistical headache of trying to keep dozens of airfields knocked out of commission for the duration of the war against the US, an extremely implausible proposition. Each new airfield that the US forces gain access to diminishes China's ability to keep US air forces out of the fight. The American-Filipino Agreement is itself an expansion of a 2014 Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. At the time, the future of the US-Philippines relations were very uncertain. The Philippines was and still is a critical US ally, and both sides have enjoyed a long defense relationship. But conflict quickly arose between President Rodrigo Duterte and President Barack Obama. The rift between the US and the Philippines was caused by President Duterte's very violent persecution of a war on the nation's crime. Duterte, a populist authoritarian, came to power on a campaign promising to end violent and drug crime in the Philippines, and upon taking office, empowered his police forces to do everything necessary to crack down on criminals. Very quickly, however, Duterte's war on crime became an outright slaughter, with thousands of drug dealers and drug users killed at the hands of the police. Drug users were even murdered in vigilante-style killings, their bodies left out in the street with a sign around their neck spelling out their crime. When President Obama called out Duterte on the violent abuses of his war against crime, Duterte responded by calling the American president a son of a bitch and telling him he could go to hell. Duterte threatened to break up the security partnership between the Philippines and the US, saying that he would seek out new relationships with Russia and China. For President Xi Jinping, this was Christmas in July, and his diplomats immediately leapt at the opportunity to turn the Philippines from a potential adversary into an ally. However, the relationship between the two allies remained strong through Duterte's troubling presidency, and the new president, Bongbong Marcos, was quickly to repair the US-Filipino rift. The defense agreement between the two countries is not without risk to the Philippines, as it places them even further under the crosshairs of long-range Chinese ballistic missile attack. But it comes with serious benefits as well. For starters, there's no better guarantee of national security than having US troops stationed alongside your own troops. Second, though, is the influx of U.S. spending in the areas where the U.S. forces will now be based. On top of ongoing cash flow from off-duty airmen and soldiers, the U.S. is also investing $82 million directly into the construction of its bases in the Philippines. This is significant for the local economy, as unlike China's Belt and Road Initiative, the U.S. is hiring local companies rather than simply using its own. Further, the U.S. has agreed to give $100 million in military aid to the Filipino military. China's military expansion into the South China Sea is also a great incentive for the Philippines to seek expanded U.S. presence on their islands. Famously, China and the Philippines have been clashing over small islands and reefs in waters recognized internationally as belonging to the Philippines. In 1995, China built a small structure on Mischief Reef, well inside the Philippines' territorial waters. It promised it was only a shelter for fishermen. However, in the typical Chinese strategy of taking an inch a year, today the island is home to an entire Chinese military base, including air defense missile batteries and Sea Whiz gun emplacements. The reef even features a runway long enough for China's largest planes. This has been part of China's militarization of reefs across the region, as it used dredges to create artificial islands. An international ruling at The Hague ruled against China's claim of ownership to these waters and in favor of the Philippines, Vietnam, and other nations to which China said, cool story bro, and kept on building what are essentially unsinkable aircraft carriers. Now these military bases pose a significant threat to the US and its partners in the region, and have been militarized to such a degree that the US Navy would have to dedicate significant resources to their destruction before being able to engage in combat operations near Taiwan. In response to this new agreement between the US and Philippines, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Mao Ning stated that the deal would escalate tensions and endanger peace and stability in the region. In an attempt to counter the deal, 
China spent considerable effort swaying the Filipino public against the U.S., and the announcement was not greeted without criticism. However, public opinion on the U.S. remained strongly favorable, with about 63% of surveyed Filipinos through 2018 to 2019 all having positive opinions of the U.S. This follows a historical trend where the U.S. has been seen as the favorite foreign nation of most Filipinos since the early 2000s. A 2022 poll showed that 89% of Filipinos had a great deal of trust or a fair amount of trust in the U.S., and the vast majority favored stronger economic ties with America than China. This is in comparison with Filipino views on China, which are overwhelmingly negative. In the same 2022 poll, only 5% of those surveyed had a great deal of trust in China, and 28% had a fair amount of trust. 67% had no trust at all or very little trust in China. This put China behind even Russia despite the war in Ukraine. The time of Duterte's cozying up to China is now over, and the US-Philippine relationship has been righted. This is bad news for China, which has seen half a decade of influence operations go up in smoke, similar to its efforts to sway Australia away from the US. What's bad for China is good for the world, though, as a Chinese invasion of Taiwan would be disastrous for the current world order. In a century increasingly defined by the struggle of authoritarianism versus democracy, China's destruction of Taiwan would be a significant low point in world affairs. But the threat is far more practical as well, as Taiwan manufactures most of the world's most sensitive electronic components, and a Chinese monopoly on those devices that modern economies run on would mean the Chinese Communist Party would have direct leverage over every nation on the planet. Either do as President Xi wants, or you'll be denied the microchips your economy needs to continue running. With a new Chinese-Russian partnership, which explicitly stated both nations' interest in pushing their version of authoritarian government on the world, the fate of Taiwan could end up defining the entire course of the 21st century. Now go check out how the Ukraine war proves the US is not ready for World War III, or click this other video instead.